So a few weeks ago, I shared the story of leaving my dream job in New York City to start out on a new path of Bible teaching and online ministry. And I'm slightly embarrassed to admit this, but for the first six to eight months after making that decision, I spent the majority of my time questioning and doubting whether I'd made the right choice. I think we all struggle with this feeling of decision remorse sometimes, right? We see a friend of ours thriving in college, and we start to question whether we made the right decision with school. We see how much money a brother or sister of ours makes, or how nice of a car they drive, and we start to question if we went into the right industry. We find ourselves feeling trapped in a relationship, and we start to doubt that we should have ever entered into the relationship in the first place. And if you're like me, then in the midst of all of this, you start to ask a pretty unhelpful question of God. What if I made the wrong choice? What if I screwed it all up? What if God wanted me to go right, but instead I went left? And while this question is absolutely natural, I still think it's pretty unhelpful for a few reasons. When I look at scripture, I see tons of characters who at one point or another made a wrong decision. Whether it was Zachariah doubting the angel's words about Mary and Elizabeth's pregnancy, or Jacob lying about pretty much everything, or Peter's denying Jesus three times, even when Jesus was on the way to the cross. But what we see in these stories is that these characters' wrong choices were not the end. Zechariah's silence was eventually broken, and he spoke the very words of God, giving a prophecy about the salvation of Jesus. Jacob was given a new name and became the father of Israel. And even Peter was reinstated into the fold of the apostles and became one of the most important founding fathers of the early church. And the truth that we see expressed in scripture when it comes to these wrong choices is that failure isn't final. When you say or do something in terms of your calling and you start to wonder if maybe that was the wrong choice or you went in the wrong direction, that failure does not have the final word. If we look at the reinstatement of Peter from John chapter 21, there's something noticeably missing in Jesus's words. Jesus doesn't bring up Peter's past at all. By the way, in a relationship with God, often the only one holding your past against you is you. Instead, we see Jesus speaking to Peter about now, do you love me? And about the future, go and feed my sheep. You see, Peter's mistake was not the end. His failure was not final because Jesus was still calling him. And that's true for you as well. Your failure isn't final because God's Spirit is still speaking. I understand what it's like to feel like you've made the wrong choice, or that your life is headed in the wrong direction, or maybe even that you missed out on God's calling for your life. But my encouragement to you today is rather than dwelling on that question of, what if I made the wrong choice in my past? Maybe a better, more helpful question is, what is God teaching me today? In John chapter 21, Jesus wasn't dwelling on the mistakes of Peter's past because Jesus had a calling for him today. And for you and for me, it's hard to dwell on the mistakes of your past when you have a mission for your present. Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching this message. I hope it was encouraging for you. If it was, give this video a like and don't forget to leave a comment. I love hearing your feedback and how God is using these messages to encourage you. This was the final part in our Calling Question series. I hope that this series was valuable for you, that it helped to clarify some of the questions you are asking as you're trying to figure out God's calling and mission for your life. I wanted to let you know that next week, we're actually taking a week off. We're taking a bit of a break for the Labor Day weekend. There will be no message next week, but the following week we will be starting a brand new series that we're calling Technology 
theology. We're gonna be looking at our relationship to screens and tech and all things digital and asking what does it look like to actually follow Jesus in a tech digital dominated world. So I hope you'll join us for that. Again, no video next week, but we're right back the following week. That's all I have for you. I love you all. Keep being awesome.